Hey everybody, it's Stu Fuchs from Ukulele Zen with another episode of Ask Stu. I'm here in London in the UK, totally psyched to be here on tour across the continent of Europe with Sanatam Kar, giving concerts and yoga workshops with her beautiful music. Last night we played at the O2 Center, it was fantastic. And right back there is the Royal Albert Hall where uh, Jimi Hendrix played and many, many, many concerts have taken place. I, I hope to someday get inside that building. That would be a dream come true. I love being here in the UK for the very first time. You know, in late April, April 27th to the 29th, I'll be at the Ukulele Fest of Scotland with Peter Moss and a whole host of other great guests. So if you want to take a train up there and see me, I will be there at the Ukulele Festival in Scotland. There's details at my website, stufuchs.com slash calendar. There's a link in the video description below. So today I'm going to offer three questions right here in Hyde Park. I'm going to offer some answers to the questions and some practice suggestions and some licks and things that you can put into your playing right away. Also just wanted to put it out there that in 2019 I'm already starting to plant the seeds for a European tour. So if you have a ukulele club or if there's a place that you would like to bring me in for a concert or a workshop, please message me through my website. There's a link in the video description below. Would love to come visit your community with a workshop and a concert in the spring of 2019. But first today. The first question comes from Judith Quartz. Judith lives in the UK and she was asking me about finger picking. Judith was wondering, you know, when you're playing finger style, is it better to plant a finger and pick, you know, or better to leave the fingers free? Now, this is a personal thing. It all depends on what's most comfortable for you. Personally, I like to be anchored on the instrument with my arm and anchored on the strings with nothing else touching. For me, that just feels the most free. It makes my fingers feel that they can really move without anything in the way. Now that said, lots of people um, get a lot of benefit from anchoring a finger. So if you like to anchor a finger, go for it. If it works for you, it works for you. All I would say is that when you're anchoring, make sure it's a light touch and not pushing down too hard. You wouldn't want to make tension. Can you see what I'm doing there? It's turning purple. So don't push too much, just uh, push lightly. It's probably turning purple because it's a little chilly out here. The second question comes from Colin, who I'm pretty sure lives in France. Colin was wondering about upstrokes. How do you make your upstrokes sound as rich as your downstrokes? A great way to cultivate upstrokes is to play music and strums that emphasize the upstroke. A great example would be ska or reggae rhythm. So we're gonna take Bob Marley's Steer It Up. Okay, the original of this is actually a ska song before he re-recorded it. It was, uh, the old version was a ska song. So we're gonna take these three chords, G, C, and D7. You can also play them in the movable shapes if you prefer. Now what you would want to do is set up a metronome clicking about this fast and then play the silences in between. So click up, click up, click up, click up, tap your foot on the click. Let's play it together. It goes like this. Up, click, 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 up. Steer it up. Little darling, steer it up. Oh, now, baby. Come on now, steer it up. Whoa, yeah, yeah. A little darling, steer it up. Now, every time I'm playing an upstroke, there are two things I'm focusing on. One is the very precise rhythmic placement, and that's what the metronome is going to help you with. So you click up, click up. Make sure that the upstroke is right in between. This seems simple, but it's actually a very challenging thing to do at first. Hang with it and eventually the rhythm will carry you. It'll become really natural, but you gotta really listen carefully at first. Second thing is, is that when I am really connecting with the string, I'm making sure I'm getting as full tone to the downstroke. So what you could do is play a downstroke, listen to your tone, and then play the upstroke and see if the two have the same volume. You know, you wanna make sure that the downstroke and the upstroke are about the same. 
At first it's very natural for the upstroke to be a little bit thinner, a little weaker at first. So just work with this and really it will only take a little bit of time before you notice every upstroke has the same richness of sound as the downstroke. Hope that's helpful to you Colin and to everybody else out there. Use a metronome, listen to the quality of your tone on the upstrokes. The third question comes from Andrew. Andrew was wondering about walking up into chords. So this is a great topic, it's one that really could take up a whole video of itself. A quick way to walk into chords is to look at the chord you're playing. I'm gonna play the movable C shape here. And you could just walk up from two frets below. So if it was like a reggae jam, you would do this. Two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, four, one. There's really no fancy music theory to this kind of approach. You're just approaching the chord from two frets below. You could also approach from one fret below or any place you want to start. A more theoretical approach to connecting chords with a walk up is to use the scale tones. Let's say for example we were playing a song that's hanging out on the key of G and we're walking our way up to C. What you could do is to play the scale tones to connect them. So we'd move from G, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, Now a more theoretical approach to this walk-up riff would be to place a chord on every one of those notes. So the first note is G, so we're going to play a G chord. The second note is A, we're going to play an A minor chord. The third note is B minor. And the fourth note, we arrive at C. When you put this all together, you get a nice chord progression that climbs a scale of chords really beautiful song that was composed by some very famous and influential English composers. Um, you may have heard of these guys before. Here, making each day of the year. Okay, so you can hear the walk up. Changing my life with a wave of her hand. Finally, what you could do is use some of the theory that we learned in the video about sixes. Remember we were doing the sixes in the key of G a few weeks back? Well, check it out, that same chord progression. Just pluck the sixes. They'll be the notes on the third and the first string. And now you're playing the chords in a way, you're implying the chords just with two notes. Here, making each day of the year, changing my life as a truck passes by. So what I'm trying to do here is just illustrate how many different ways you can use the walk-up principle. First, of course, we can just move from a few frets below. Second, we can use single notes from a scale. We can apply full chords. And we can also pick the sixes within that chord. So I hope this is helpful. Explore this between other chords and other songs and hope this is really fun for you, Andrew. Thanks so much for watching everybody. If you dig this video, hope you'll give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to Ukulele Zen. We're off to Lisbon, Portugal tomorrow. So I'll do my best to keep these videos coming to you. Really appreciate you watching and I hope this video brightens your day and helps your music making. Take good care till we see each other again. Peace, love and uke.